Hello kittens, welcome back. This is Seb the Cat. So, Thursdays we do game development and today we're going to focus on our game Drifter. Drifter is a 2D sort of space shooter with a puzzle twist built using the Godot engine and uh, I think today we'll be focusing on our shooting mechanic as well as starting with a simple enemy AI. Um, so let's have a quick look at the game as it stands and then we can jump right into the code. So we obviously have some placeholder art uh, in place uh, and it's looking pretty rough but the core mechanics are here. You've got thrusters up and thrusters down. You have rotation and a bit of gravity, and you can zoom all over the place and pick up a chain of letters. And uh, these letters follow you around and are essentially your ammunition uh, going forward. The puzzle mechanic that we'll be adding here will be uh, essentially a spelling system where your task is to build words in order to progress through different areas of the level or to win challenges. Uh, now we do have a simple multiplayer element uh, to the game, although uh, that has taken a back burner while we get the core mechanics, uh, I guess, sorted and um, still uh, still ironing out a couple of kinks in the networking code, which I'd rather not do on stream because I think it might be a bit tedious. Uh, doing the graphical and more visually appealing stuff usually translates better to live streaming, so uh, that's what we're focusing on at the moment. Okay, so uh, right now we have our sort of chain of letters that follows the player along, and we can shoot bullets, uh, obviously some placeholder bullets there, what we're going to do today is we're going to add a letter of the alphabet. So if I push shoot now, what should happen is the T should pop off my chain and get transferred onto the bullet, and the bullet should have a T shot on it. Uh, and so as I shoot, what we're going to do is we, we probably need to implement some sort of timer so the player can't shoot as quickly as they push space. We actually want uh, to keep that uh, under control a little bit by limiting the player and we also want to be removing those letters from the tail whenever they shoot so they obviously don't have unlimited bullets and this is going to make the multiplayer game a little bit more fun because uh, you have to trade off between shooting and collecting letters for your words so that is kind of what we are going to do. Uh, any questions, please don't be afraid to pop them in the chat. And let me just update the stream information before we get started. Fantastic. Okay. That way people won't be confused when they find us with the wrong title on stream. Okay, so I guess, um, where should we start? Um, let me just load up our workspace. Uh, sorry. This one. Okay, so this is our ship code here, and I think 
we shoot somewhere here. Perhaps not. Oh, no, we shoot from the player object, not from the ship object. So the player is a sort of aggregate node. Um, so in some respects, you could imagine that the player, so that the human being, controls the ship, really. Uh, however, the concept of the player is a little bit bigger than just the ship. The player is a combination of the ship and the tail and some other objects. So that's the difference there. I'm losing my voice. <coughs> okay. So now the player here, uh, we have a ship shoot. And I think this is essentially what we are going to plug into to add our um, letter to the bullet. Uh, but I think, first of all, we need to go into our tail state. To our, so our, our tail state is a, uh, a reference. Uh, so it's not quite a node. It doesn't have a place in the node tree. This is actually sort of a our data model, we're not actually doing much uh, with it just yet. Um, it, but essentially it just tracks the letters that are present in the tail at any one time and it allows us to operate on that in a central place instead of bogging down the ship or the player scripts with something that is um, isolated. So what I'm going to do is I want to implement a pop function, right? Uh, and that is going to return a string. And oops. for now, let's just return our contents dot first. Or um, get. What is contents again? Contents is a string. Uh, so contents dot is it at something? Substr. I'm starting to think it might be better to model the contents as an array instead. But let's see. Okay, so the substring method takes a from, so we're obviously going to take the first one and we're going to take just one item. So this is a naive imp implementation. So I'm going to put a to do here and say uh, remove letter as well later on. But we're going to start with that naive implementation first. Okay. So what's going to happen here? Uh, when we shoot, we're going to grab, grab our tail state and we're going to pop, right? And we're going to say the letter is equal to the tail state pop. And when we uh, when we initialize this missile, we're going to say missile dot, uh, let's call this character. Wait, no, character can mean a lot of things, right? But it could mean like a player character, but this is probably more precise. Uh, so the missile letter is going to equal the letter and then bang, right? Uh, Okay, cool. And what we're going to need now is within our missile scene. We're going to need a label. So this is where we're going to define 
and print to this to the screen uh, what letter this uh, in, uh, includes is I guess um, okay so this is all placeholder art and we don't need to be precious about it okay so we're gonna align center center uppercase yep visible characters one cool and we're just gonna put an a here for measure okay so <clears throat> Let's set our custom font, and I think we've already got a custom font set up here. We do. And is that going to be too big? Let's make it like a 30. Okay. I'm not seeing this at all. Let's hide this shape here. Uh, if I turn off this custom font, maybe something different. Um, Odd that that resource isn't loading. Oh, I see. Okay, I know what the problem is. I can actually just fix this in VS Studio Code. So we just did a little uh, refactor a while back and we forgot to update this path here. Cool. Uh, now, if we reload that resource, hopefully we get something. Should be this one. Okay. Why is that still not working? I think it's just too big. This, oh, there we go. Perfect. All right. Cool. Uh, might put a little bit of an outline on that so that we can always see it regardless of the background. All right. And uh, now we just need to create some properties for it. Um, we're going to say like export string var character is equal to empty string to begin with right and then on enter tree we are oh, before we do that in fact let me switch over to vsg code it's a bit nicer to code in Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create an on on ready var, and that is going to be the uh, label, and it's going to be equal to what do we call it? Just label, right? Yeah. So dollar sign label. So dollar sign is sort of like a shorthand to get a node from a scene. <clears throat> okay. And then what? Uh, yep, yeah, okay, so we've got our label. Well, we've got a reference to our label. 